awfully grinny and happy over there. Life's good. Life's good, man. I've got a YouTube idea for you. Okay. It's a challenge. Go on, I like it. A couple of rules, and it ends with one of us running in a dress outside. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we have three scenarios. We have $10,000, $60,000, and a quarter million dollars. And we have to see who has the best strategy and can make the most money. Okay, that sounds doable. I'm confident in my ability not to have to end up wearing a dress at the end of this. I do have one request. What's that? Can we stop doing this? Yeah. <laughs> can we stop doing this? <laughs> Hello, and welcome hey. to the Kai Andrew YouTube channel. <laughs> Let's lay out some ground rules here for this contest. Mm -hmm. So first mm -hmm. thing, we've got an hour. 60 minutes. We then have to show proof of our numbers for each scenario. We then also have to say why we chose each strategy. And then lastly, we can't leverage any of our contacts or networks. Ready? Right? Um, I guess go. so. Wait, okay. so hold on. Yeah. Do we have to go buy the dress? No, we just use your wife. Hey, you're on YouTube. Really quick question. Um, do you have a dress that Kai or me could fit in? Maybe. I've got broad shoulders. No, you don't. We just established. You look tiny in it. I can find something. Maybe. Why? Oh, no reason. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and ready, set, go. Well, bye. See ya. So I'm back in my studio and I, if I know Rob, he's probably gonna try to find a way to use a $10,000, stretch it out, and then try to buy like three homes or something, which he probably could. But I don't have that luxury because I don't know how he would even do that or how I'd do that. So with the $10,000, what I'm gonna be doing is actually a lease in half, or what I call a lease in half. Well, first of all, we have to find the right location. So drum roll, I'm going to go to Raleigh, North Carolina. And the reason why I like to go to Raleigh or why I'm attracted to Raleigh is because it's a bigger city, obviously, and it's very hip. And also, it's growing. And the prices aren't completely outrageous. They're still pretty high. Now, what I do first to study or look at a market is I like to use Zillow. So I'll jump into Zillow. And what, instead of going to sold or for sale, I click on for rent, which then gives you all these beautiful little purple circles everywhere. Now, the next thing that I do is I need to go to home type. Obviously, I want a home to house hack. It. And then the next thing is I'm going to go with a basement and I want to finish basement. Now I'll probably have to pick up my phone and call some property managers, landlords, or even homeowners. And what I want to make sure that it's clear is that I can do a sublease or that I can rent out another portion of the property while I'm living there. What I'll do then is I'm gonna find the median rental rate here. So for a home with a finished basement, we're looking at $2,500 a month, fantastic. So what that allows us to do is I'm gonna be living inside the basement while I short-term rent out the upstairs. Now, if I jump over to Airbnb real quick here, and I just take a look at going rates of three bedroom homes, but let's just be super duper conservative and say $100 a night at like an 80% occupancy rate, okay? That means that we'll be bringing in roughly, what is that, 2,400 bucks, which essentially pays off our rent. So basically I'm, I'm break even. Now you're like, that's not really good. Now what's that $10,000 going to? That $10,000 is going to furnishing out the place, which any of you that know about my land hacker program, I tell you how to furnish a place for 30 to 80% off. But now you're probably asking like, well, why did I just pay $10,000 just to break even? It's not just breaking even. You essentially have a free place to live as you increase your savings significantly, meaning that you'd be saving about 30,000, maybe 35,000 a year off of a $10,000 investment that goes straight into your bank, which means that you are making roughly a 300 to 350% return on your initial $10,000 that you invested into the property. Not too bad, I win. So right off the bat here, I only have about $10,000, which really doesn't leave me a lot of room to spread my wings and fly, but I think if I was getting started out with $10,000 in the real estate world, I'm definitely gonna be going for a house hack. A house hack is basically where you buy a property, you live in the property, and you subsidize that mortgage by allowing people to rent out rooms or spaces in your house. So whether that's like a guest room, a murder closet, a living room couch, 
an ADU in your backyard. There are so many ways that you can make supplemental income on your property by just renting out some of your unused space. I mean, and that's just part of it. There's so many other benefits. I found a house right here for about $300,000 in Kansas City. Roughly speaking, we're looking at a mortgage of $300. Now, what I like about house hacking is that if you do it right, you actually don't have to pay a mortgage at all. This is a four bedroom, two bath. So let's just say that you stayed in the master by yourself, and then you rented out those other three rooms. If you're able to rent out each of those extra bedrooms for $600 a piece, 1800 bucks, which means you only have to pay $300 a month out of pocket to live in a house that you know people are paying your mortgage for, but also it's an appreciating asset. So 30 years from now, it's gonna be worth a heck of a lot more Chipotle burritos than it is today. So a few assumptions going into the mortgage here, if you put 3.5% down, it won't let me round down and then you have a 5.25% interest rate, this is gonna vary, then your mortgage is gonna be roughly $2,100 a month. Oh, and last little thing about this property, I mean, a house hack just assumes that you're renting it long-term, but you can also do a supercharged house hack, which is my preference, where you basically list every single room on Airbnb because you don't have to have that room occupied all month. You can just be very selective about who you take and when you take them, and you can make a lot more. All right, here we are, challenge number two, where we have $60,000 now to spend. I'm shifting away from the lease and hack model, I'm getting into the buy and hack, okay? Even introducing myself a little bit into the land hack side of stuff. Now, where or where should I be looking if I only have 60,000, only 60,000? Still a substantial amount of money. I am going to a super sleeper area in Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. Detroit actually has been one of the hardest hit cities ever since the 2008 financial crash. It's not back to its glory days, but it's on its way back up. And what I really like is in cities like Detroit, which is a major city, there's still a lot of affordable housing let me show you all right jumping back over here to zillow i am looking for for sale homes now for my max price here i'm gonna put 425,000. okay i want a house multifamily, lots of land and then manufactured i go into the more of the strategy on why i do all that in my land hacker program but essentially i'm looking for more than just houses here and then for acreages I'm actually looking for at least two acres or more because remember, I want to ideally do a land hack. And scrolling through it, you can immediately see why I'm drawn to Detroit. It still has, it's a major city. Michigan is up and coming. And I truly believe it's an underserved market. And you can really get to these homes relatively inexpensively compared to other states like Oregon, Washington, California, Tennessee, Florida, Texas, so on and so forth. And so here we are, and I'm starting to see some properties I really like. Now, I know that Rob used to, likes to buy cutesy homes and so I see a couple of these cutesy homes here that I actually really like. So there's two of them right here, right off the bat. So this one right here is actually got some good bones. It's not too bad. It's actually almost in rentable shape. And I also know that there's a basement that I can live in exactly just like this. Okay, so a little bit of work to be done. But the great thing about this is that I know I can fix this up over time. I don't have to do it all at one time, but I can slowly fix this up. I can definitely live down here for right now and then rent out the upstairs and that will at least pay the mortgage and I can build equity by fixing up the basement. And that still leaves us, how many acres is on this lot? This still leaves us 19 acres? I was expecting two or three acres. I had no idea this night. This might be a killer deal. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't film and post this up. It has a nice big barn, city water on a paved street with city water and city sewer. How is that on 19 acres? So this might even be a better bargain than I thought for 19 acres for this home that's actually in really good condition with the barn and everything on it. Look at that, it's beautiful. Huh. That's the first property for 400,000. Let's take a look, look at this other one that's also for 400,000. Three bed, two bath, $1,300 little cutie. Look at the blue little cutie here. So this one I bet is recently remodeled. Yeah, you can, you can definitely tell by the photos here that it was recently remodeled or at least updated, refreshed, however you want to call it. And this is actually really nice. I can definitely rent this out. Oh yeah, this is really rentable. It's already got really nice decor. I could even negotiate the price to keep the furniture there. Maybe this was an already an Airbnb. If this was already an Airbnb, that's even nicer because then I can just uh, ask for their numbers and I can run numbers off of what they have. And here's the basement. This is where I'd be living and it's already finished. This is almost, this is almost even better. Okay, so there's not a lot of equity built, built there because it's already all built out, but let's see how many acres. Four acres, okay. So that's more of like what I was expecting in this price range. So we have a 19 acre place, we got a four acre place. At the end of the day, it's $400,000 for each of them, roughly $40,000 down, leaving me $20,000 left over, okay? This is the strategy here, is that, wait, I just read something on that, that was really interesting. Look at this, this is what I'm talking about. Zoned ag, so time to get creative. 
You can even, okay, this property has been surveyed and perked. You can even build another home. Okay, these are two crazy good deals, these types of properties. I'm assuming it's two taxable lots on one parcel and you can build another home. That's fantastic for somebody like me where I want to hack it and I wanna build more homes or build more structures. This is a very quick way of me being able to do that. The other place, 19 acres, I'm gonna to have to dig a little bit more into the zoning, the permits, but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be able to figure something out where I can add another door or another two, three doors. All right, so let's go over to Airbnb real quick. I wanna look up Detroit real fast, just to give me a good idea. And I'm gonna filter this for, I believe it's a two bedroom, right? It was an entire place, it's two bedroom house. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay, so we scroll down here, 190, 90, 108, 101. Okay, so it's gonna be similar to Raleigh. We're gonna say 100 bucks and mine's gonna look way nicer than this. I'm gonna be conservative, 100 bucks a night at let's say an 80% occupancy rate again, which gives us $2,400 a month. The mortgage and taxes on it, is gonna be roughly around 2,800 to maybe $3,000 a month. Now, you're probably immediately saying like, oh, you're losing $600. Not really, you're basically subsidizing your house. That's off of just leasing the upstairs or renting out the upstairs. What happens when we start building equity, right? When we start adding new structures and we add more doors, whether it's a glamp site, it's a trailer, it's a tiny home, I bring in one of my shipping containers. There's a bunch of options here where we can actually start maximizing the income streams coming into it and that's land hacking. There's a lot, obviously there's a lot more to it than just dropping something on there. But essentially you guys see what I'm getting at. Once I get past that one door, it really starts to cash flow. But in the worst case scenario, here I am where I took $60,000 and I still get to live for free and I have the opportunity of creating a ton of equity. Interested to see what Rob did. Okay, number two. So I have a little bit more money. Uh, Kai opened up the purse strings for me and I've got about $60,000 to invest in a property. Now, $60,000 is a really, really healthy budget if you're looking to get into short-term rentals. So I think what I'm gonna be going for here is a standard short-term rental purchase using a second home loan. What I love about a second home loan is that it allows you to put down 10% instead of 15 or 20% with traditional investment loans. All right, keyboard warriors, calm down. There are some stipulations here. If you're gonna use a second home loan to fund the purchase, then you have to actually use it as a second home for about two weeks out of the year. But you're gonna wanna check with your mortgage broker on this. So for example, if you vacation somewhere all the time and you've always wanted to buy a house in that area, but you couldn't justify buying it because you're not gonna be using it all year, thus throwing away mortgage money, this is a perfect way to subsidize the mortgage. You have other people pay for your mortgage. It's a genius concept. So I found a property here that fits the bill for me. I guess we're gonna be staying with the Kansas City theme today. This one came out to $299,000, so right about $300,000. 10% down on this property is gonna be about $30,000. You got all your closing costs, and then it gives you a little bit of wiggle room for your furniture too. So let me just show you how this pants, pancels, pancels out. So let me just show you how this pancels out. <laughs> Dang it! Let me show you how this pancels out. All right, you're gonna put your address in the AirDNA tool here and it's gonna spit out a projection based on the stats that you input. So we're looking at $221 a night average at a 61% occupancy. Now me being the super, super host that I am, I know that I can probably get a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and input 70%. I'd hope that I could get this to an 80%. And when I enter all my different stats here, like my furnishings, legal costs, set of costs, everything like that, this property is gonna come out to a 24.45% cash on cash return, which is just about two and a half times more than you're gonna make on the stock market or a typical long-term rental in any given year. Not bad at all. Good luck topping that one, Mr. Kai. Now, if you like my fancy schmancy spreadsheet here, you can You can download it for free in the link down below. Kai is gonna kindly leave my link down there. Right, Kai? Obviously, you know that I love short-term rentals. I think there's so much opportunity here in this market. A lot of people keep saying that it's oversaturated, but honestly, I just looked for like five, 10 minutes, and I found a couple of properties that gave me a decent return. You can do that too. I know you can, all right? So challenge number three is $250,000. Quarter mil, 250K. What would I do? I'm gonna use that money, and I'm gonna do something that's a little bit different and go to one my favorite spots that's on my top five list, Asheville, North Carolina. And I am going to be doing a new construction. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah, new construction, baby. Because I can get a new construction loan for 20% down. I don't have to use my to my full $250,000. All I have to do is put 20% down and I can get a construction loan and I can start building. Now, land out there is actually relatively inexpensive. I jump over to the computer real quick. We can see that for relatively large acres or acreages of land, it's about a quarter million dollars. Look at this, 7.36 acres for 100,000, 89,000, 125, 200. It's all within the ballpark of reasonable.
affordable. So my plan here though, is to put 20% down. I'm gonna be budgeting around $600,000 total. So 20% of that is $120,000, still leaving me $130,000 in cash. And what I'm gonna do with that loan and that $130,000 in cash is I'm gonna be building what I know and what I like, shipping containers. I'm gonna be doing a roughly a 1,300 square foot four container build that's gonna be super unique and build both equity and cash flows. Now I get into this way deeper inside the program and other videos, but really what I'm trying to do is kill two birds with one stone. Now what I really believe is looking at Airbnb, I can rent this bad boy out for $250 a night. $250 a night at 80% or sorry, 70% occupancy rate is still $5,200 a month. That more than covers my mortgage. Now, here's a real sweet deal of all of this. Not only am I building equity, but you guys know me, I love to land hack. This is only one door. I'm gonna make sure that I get the zoning, the permits right. I'm gonna set up the phases correctly, do the site plan right. And I'm going to slowly start adding more and more sites, properties or homes or structures, whatever the new strategy is going to be, I'm gonna be creating multiple income streams off this one property. One thing at a time. First one, try to get it to cash flow, but in the least, I have a free piece of property to do what I will with it, and that's my plan. Beat that, Rob. I doubt you can. Okay, Mr. Daddy Cash Kai Andrew himself has given me a quarter million dollars and in 20 hours a week to execute. What would I do here? Well, honestly, I think it's pretty simple. There are a couple of options you have. You can go and buy a property and start cash flowing immediately which I think is a little boring, or you can go and build a super deluxe premium property. Now, typically to do this, you're gonna need to do a new construction loan, which will require about 20%. So $250,000 plus some interest and carrying costs should get us there. And I'll give you an example of a property that I'm building right now. So if you look here, these are the original renders, right? The lo-fi renders of this property. Uh, you know, not super impressive when, when you see it illustrated like this, but when you see the 3D of this, it really becomes a very premium property that I'm gonna be building out in Joshua Tree, California. I'm actually gonna be building 20 of these for a fund that I'm raising, so if you're interested in learning about that, hit me up. But this property right here is gonna cost me about a million dollars to build, but I'm hoping that by the end of it, it's gonna be worth between 1.5 and 1.6 million dollars. So hopefully, in the best case scenario, I already have half a million dollars of equity in this property. This is really where I'm putting a lot of my time and passion into is unique builds, right? I think if you have the opportunity to build a unique $1 million house, why the heck wouldn't you do that, right? And in this scenario, where I was magically given $250,000, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And then when it's done, you're gonna go and book it and stay there and say, oh my gosh, Rob, this is the coolest house I've ever stayed at. Five stars. Thanks in advance. Boop. I flew back home. That's right. I ran some numbers. In your own studio. In my own studio. That's right. <laughs> and I think, and you, you came having, back here, you flew back here. I flew back here, private right. jet. Fly in the same in the outfit same for continuity. Same day. Nice. Yep. <laughs> I've got three really good scenarios that I think I might have you beat on. I like it. That's pretty good. Okay. But there is a flaw with your model, and we'll reveal that flaw as I, as I walk <laughs> you through my scenario. Okay which is just a straight up house hack. So I like yours because you can basically live for free and you can save money. But what I like about an actual house hack is that you can go, you can buy a house, and then you can charge other people to you know, live there. They will pay your mortgage and you get all of the upside of that property. But with an apartment complex, you don't necessarily get, well, no, not necessarily, and you <laughs> absolutely don't get any of the upside. Quick shout out to Accountability Tax Pros, right? You know, yep, that's right. If you guys don't know, we're actually partnered up with a tax company right now where we actually have a tax team to help people and real estate creators and entrepreneurs. Link down below if you guys want to set up a free consultation with my tax pro, Kevin Smith. Kevin, check, I'll check. Give, I'll give you the first check, one. Check, check, win for me, win for me, sir. <laughs> All right, scenario two. I think I'm gonna get I'm gonna get you back here. So a bit of a what I call a burr stir. So basically, kind of like a live-in burr. Like you live here, you're fixing it up over time, adding value to it, and then if you wanted to, you could do like a cash out refine, actually pull, pull some of this money out. Put it good. I like that. That's what that's, I would do. That's much cooler than mine. We have pretty similar okay. thoughts. I was gonna also say very unique. Cause basically you often need 20% down to build a property. So $250,000 basically gets you 20% of like a million bucks plus some closing fees and interest and carrying costs and everything like that. We sidebarred. Yes, we did. 
we conceived a new idea. A new idea. I guess that is important to clarify. We conceived a new idea that <laughs> no, I think we, yeah, we, we didn't. We didn't conceive. A child. We didn't conceive a child. No. That yeah, would have taken nine months. I mean, you ten steps that will walk you through the entire process, A to Z. So if you want to watch it, head on over to my channel and. You can follow our process for how to do it. Yeah, but we gotta settle the bet. Because that uh, last yeah. one. It's kind of a tie, right? It's kind of a tie. You won the first one. Mm -hmm. then you I won, won the, the second, second one. Rochambeau. Loser has to run in your wife's dress outside <laughs> down the street. Mm -hmm. I don't like those odds. It's like 50 50. Yeah, that's fine. We can do best, best, of, best of three. Best of three? Okay. okay. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Oh, oh let's go to three. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Go. One, two. <laughs> Come on, paper, scissors, go. Oh, again. All right, you you're very predictable. Um, I really just played scissors, basically. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you're so back. bad at this game. Oh, go back up. <laughs> we kind of look like a hospital patient, honestly. If it makes you feel really? any better, yeah. I feel like I can run pretty fast in this though. Like a really cute hospital patient. Really great. Oh good. wow, you look really jacked. Are you second guessing your, your bet here? Yeah, I am actually. I have to go out in public like this. This dress, which one's the most embarrassing one? Definitely that one. Definitely this one? Embar the most embarrassing for me too, because this is my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the bet to Rob, and uh, I have to go outside and run down the street in this swanky dress. <laughs> Do a full lap, I'll come around. Okay. Alright, you ready? Uh-huh. Bye! <laughs> and off he goes. I see him. <laughs> you did it! Dogs, you scared all the dogs! <laughs> and all my neighbors. All my neighbors will always wonder what happened today. Do I look pretty at least? You do look pretty cute. I will give you that.